G'day to all my friends and family and welcome, welcome to Jim's 5am club and I'm doing a 5am club um, in the evening. It's uh, almost 10 o'clock at night but I thought I'd just pump out one more to make it four, four for the day because I do need to uh, stay on track in order to deliver my thousand vlogs by my 61st birthday. So I uh, just sat down, did a book summary, took some notes and thought that I'd um, just uh, deliver one more, which I really enjoy doing. And this one's a, a cracker and it's called the, uh, the Longevity, the Longevity Project, uh, written by a dual authorship of uh, Howard Freeman and Leslie Martin. And it's a book which looks at... Uh, how old is enough and what do we need to do to try and live for as long as we can and enjoy the fruits of a healthy life and a wholesome, uh, balanced life. So uh, the author talks about uh, something which not too many people are aware of and basically says and suggests that most people think about biology <coughs> sorry about that most people think about biology when considering um, how long they'll live but interestingly ac according to this massive study that's been happening overseas that's been going on for a very long time a lot of what allows you to live a long life has nothing to do with food and drink because uh, according to these authors here, and according to this study, this scientific study, aging happens mostly in your head and is psychological. So uh, as I alluded to earlier, this book is based on a, uh, a project and it's the longest, the longest running study on human development and uh, or human health and longevity and uh, there are a lot of learnings that we can take from this and it's not too late it's not too late to uh, to do what we need to do in order to live long enough uh, we're not all going to live to 100 my parents died with a six or well, my mother died with a six in front of her, my, her age and my father was with a seven but it, uh, it, it, all, it all depends. And, uh, but uh, according to this book here, there's a lot more to it than just your genetics. There's a lot more to it than what you put into your mouth or what you drink, um, how you exercise, but it's also about how you think and the environment that you have around you. So the first major point to come out of this book from this, these two authors, is that you'll live longer if you start thinking and taking responsibility for your life by being conscientious and living with some discipline. Um, so once again, the authors are, are not just making this up. It's an observation that they've been able to extract from this study that they did or that they've been part of they've been able to look into the results and to uh, work on some of the observations and those observations are being made available to us for us to consider and see what we can do to uh, live a better life and uh, incorporate some of these things into our daily practices so um, the authors start off with asking a simple question uh, what sort of person are you? And it's a reflective question, of course, to, uh, to have a look and for us to think about the sort of person that we are. And the first sort of person that the authors talk about is, are you diligent? Are you organized? Are you responsible, hardworking, serious, and conscientious? Or, on the other hand, are you easygoing, casual, fun, and a bit chaotic? 
And what they suggest is that if you're the first type, the diligent, organized, responsible, hardworking, serious, and conscientious, there is a higher chance that you may live a longer life, a longer and a healthier life. So why? Why do you think that being conscientious, organized, responsible, hardworking, serious, and conscientious, why do you think these sort of things can lead to a, a longer, a longer life? And the authors just step through them one by one and they say that basically, if you're conscientious, then there's a high chance that you're risk averse, um, that you'll live a healthier lifestyle, you'll drive more carefully, you'll eat more carefully, um, you'll be looking more at your, your nutrition than if you're not diligent, you'll probably you know, have sleep practices and sleep longer to make the most of your downtime, you most probably exercise, you may even drink less, smoke less, uh, abuse substances less, and basically be a little less stressed because your life is more organized and more, more planned. Just bear with me. There you go, a bit of music in the background is always nice. So the second thing on that list is responsible. So if you're response able, it means that, uh, and I, this is, I learned this for the first time and I find it really, really powerful. And what they're saying is that responsible people tend to have higher levels of serotonin in their, in their bodies, which leads to a more stable mood and helps with good decisions. So responsible people, people who are calmer, people who are diligent, organized, hardworking, serious, conscientious, all of those sorts of things, according to this, the authors here, tend to lead to a chemical reaction in your body where you've got ample, um, ample amounts of serotonin in your body which help stabilize your mood and by stabilizing your mood means that you're in a more peaceful a peace more peaceful state which will allow for better decisions and a calmer lifestyle so what they're saying here is that conscientious and responsible people also tend to surround themselves with people of the same ilk you know, people who are similar in their natures. Um, you know, people who are also diligent, responsible, and all of the other things that we talked about there. So, um, that's, a, that's a, not a bad way to start, because a lot of people are looking for the magic bullet, and they talk about med Mediterranean diet, and stressless lifestyle, and all of these other things. But these authors come at it from a scientific perspective where they've been able to observe different groups of people and worked out what works and what doesn't work across uh, multiple um, countries and, uh, and observations. So the next point from this book is an absolute cracker, <laughs> especially for us married men. Because what they've found is that, and this is a serious point, so uh, hear me out here. And I haven't heard this before, but I've always wondered, I've always wondered why women outlive men. And um, the authors here give some reasons which you may want to consider and think about. And what they're saying is that marriage is important to men. If you are a man, according to the book here, if you're a man and you find a great woman and stay married to that woman, then you've got a chance of living longer, 
a longer life. But the contrary isn't the same for women. So what they're saying is for a woman, regardless of whether or not she's married or single, chances are that she'll live longer anyway. It's just because of the way women are wired and a few other things which, which we'll go through. But the next point is even more concerning, especially in today's day of today's age of uh, family breakdown. What they say here, and I'm sorry to say this, but it, uh, it is very, very sad. If you are a male who gets divorced or remarries, your chances of living longer are less, less than those who are married to the same woman. It's a real powerful statement that. And uh, I've always been pro-marriage and pro-staying together. I've always told friends of mine who were considering divorce to stay married and, and ride it out because all weddings, all marriages have their ups and down times. But according to the, um, the, the studies here, according to these studies, these are scientific studies, what they say here is that the stressful consequences of a divorce never go away and remarrying, remarrying doesn't change it. So this is mainly for men, all right? Because as we said, for women, it doesn't matter if they're married or single or if they're divorced and remarried, they all tend to live a long life anyway. And we'll, we'll get to that reason shortly. But for a man, if a man divorces, then the consequences of a divorce never go away and remarrying doesn't change it. That is really remarkable. And the reason why uh, it doesn't matter for a woman, and, but what they're saying is that if a woman marries a man and has a great marriage, she may live longer. But uh, on average, if, um, if they don't marry, if they have an average marriage, they'll still live much longer than, than the men anyway. And the reason why women live longer than men and this is this has surprised me as well is that because a woman's body becomes infertile after menopause it slows down their aging and the, the the decay in the body because reproductive cycles strain the body so because a man continues to produce sperm well into their 80s and can continue to uh, be sexually active as long as uh, the Viagra crane <laughs> is still uh, in production. They say that uh, that reproductive cycle that men go through strain the body, a restraint on the body, which is interesting. So uh, it's, it's really, really interesting. So the third point to come out of this book is that friends really matter if you want to live long. Now you've got to stay connected and have real friendships and uh, and that's why you know like if you're um, if you're married and you've got a significant other that's going to help you because being married to a significant other is probably the greatest friendship you'll ever have but having other friends close friends is also important according to the author and to the point where the author hears, or the authors say here that the study shows that friends matter even more than having a faith and religion. But when you look at it from a different angle, you also see that religion enables social contact and puts you in contact and helps you create friends. <laughs> so one leads to the other either way. But friends are very, very important if you want to live a long and healthy life, according to the authors. And women are really good at friendships. You know, I, I just look at people of my age, men and women. The women have an unreal social life. 
their route, they're about, they're organizing things, they're doing different things, looking after grandchildren, looking after each other, chatting on the phone, chatting on social media, having fun, being cheeky. They do lots of stuff and they live an interesting life and, 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 and contribute and are partners in each other's health, fun, health and development. Whereas we men are absolutely hopeless. We don't keep in contact. We don't organize anything. No, we couldn't even organize a piss up in a brewery at our age. It's bloody sad. I just, you know, I remember when I was young, I had just so many friends. And I also told my children, I told my daughters, you know, I had more friends than what they had and better friends. But where are they now? Whereas all the women out there still have their friendships and um, have, have great friendships. But as I say to my daughters, I've, I'm married to my best friend. So um, I'm not missing out on much anyway. So the key, the key is to, uh, for men to maintain a strong social circle where possible. Because by having a strong social circle, you'll be connected and chances are that you may live longer and be happier along the way. So um, do something, do something to stay connected. I know it's hard as a man to, um, to get up and, and have the um, confidence to, to stay connected, but you just gotta do something to maintain your social connections. And the author then finishes off this book here is that in terms of the point that you need to be connected, but it can't be a fake connection. A lot of our social media connections, I know lots of people with thousands of friends and contacts on uh, Facebook and Instagram. But the reality is that most of those connections are just fake. Uh, ir are irrelevant and are not going to be part of uh, your social development growth and very very few of those people you can ever call upon to catch up for a beer or a drink or a coffee or a chat so uh, don't don't get sucked into the vortex of thinking that having friends on Facebook or social media uh, uh, are going to help you live longer but if well managed, at least you can stay in contact and have that as, as one of the pillars of your connections. But nothing beats face-to-face -face connection. On Saturday after work, I made a point to go and catch up with my friend Tony, Michael Bardo Tony, where we only caught up for about 15, 20 minutes. But we had a chat, we had a laugh, we caught up. And um, that face-to-face -face contact, especially for men, where you can shake the hand, you can slap on the back, you can have a bit of a laugh, you can be cheeky, you can talk about topics that you can't talk about in front of your, your children or your wife and just have a, a good old dirty laugh is just so important. So that's about it from this book. So um, I hope you got as much out of it as what I did. So let's finish off with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I'm well, I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, I always say this, stay connected, stay relevant, stay reasonable. And let's take a few points out of this longevity project to uh, stay connected, to, uh, to live a life where you're diligent, organized, responsible, hardworking, serious, and conscientious. It's important what you eat what you drink, how you exercise, what goes into your head, so your diet from your mouth and also your mind diet, but also to stay connected to people and have a social circle, to marry and stay married as long as possible to your girl and to know that your wife doesn't need you in order to live a long life, but you... <laughs> You need her more than she needs you. It's important to understand that. So from a man's perspective, just don't be egotistical. Stay connected with your, your life partner 
and also have a circle of friends that you can depend on and relate to. Anyway, that's it for me, Yasas, and I'll come to you again tomorrow from a different location with a different message, a message of empowerment, where we can be the wind beneath our wings and we can live, learn and pass it on. So thank you very much for joining me on Jim's 5am Club at this late hour, 10 o'clock tonight. So I'll be probably, I'll probably be in bed sleeping by about 11.30 and I'll be up at 4.30 to kick off the, the next morning of my life, God willing. So yasas, take care. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.